Hi everybody, Mike again. In one of my earlier videos, in the comments, I got a request from Yop It's Sahaj. And if I mispronounce that, please accept my apologies. Anyway, he wrote, how do I mask a moving object to show another object is flying? Now the conversation went back and forth a little bit, but what he basically wanted was to know how to have an object floating above your hand. So I decided to work on it, put something together, and now we have this video to do it. I'm Mike, and I'll show you how. As always, the first thing we want to do is create a new project. So we'll open one up. Uh, with, we'll keep the same settings here, 1080p, 1920 by 1080, keep everything at the default, and then go to Start Editing. And you'll see my workspace. The next thing we want to do is create a composite shot. Since this is the one where everything's going to be happening, we'll call this Main and set it for about 20 seconds. That's all we're going to need here. Everything else can stay the same. We're good and click OK. Now it's time to import our files into here. So the first thing we want to do is put this, this film here, this video. And drop it right into the composite shot. And let's take a look at what it's doing. And as you see, I kind of look ridiculous here. So let's get to work and try to make me look not so ridiculous. The first thing we want to do, since we want to have a, an object floating above my hand, is to track the path of my hand as we go through the video. So let's get to about here. And now as we open up the properties of the video, you see a line called tracks. And we'll click the plus sign here. Now you see a red box inside a green box. And you see a tracking dot inside there. That's what we're going to use to track everything. So let's go ahead and move it down to the hand. And in the red box is going to be what HidFilm wants to track. And it should be something distinctive and not to be confused with other objects in the video. That's why I'm wearing a dark sweater in this, because my hand can definitely contrast to that. The green box is going to be where HitFilm is going to, to look to find where the palm of my hand is. So let's move that down a little bit here. And for the most accurate results, you want to try to have the red box as small as possible but still give it a little bit of room here. So right about there is the palm of my hand. Let's scroll out and see what happens. On the left hand side, you see two options. You can go with single point or double points. In this one, we'll go with single point. Optical flow and options we can keep as they are, but let's start tracking here. We can do that by clicking the forward arrow. So let's start it. And now you see the blue coming into the picture. And that is the track that HitFilm is using to follow my hand. When you have a good accurate track, you don't have to manually edit so much. But sometimes you do. And you see this one's actually looking pretty good here. It's following the palm and going up. Now you see it's stopped. Let's scroll out. The reason is because we're going off the screen. But since I'm going to be throwing the object up in the air, we want to manually add a couple of more frames here. So let's go ahead and do that. We have to go forward a frame and it's outside of the layer. So 
let's just move one frame forward and we can scroll here move the box up a little bit and maybe do another frame or so and we're out of here okay great let's scroll back and now you see our tracking path you see it follow my hand as it moves let's as you see here let's scrub it and follows up pretty nicely and gone so that's the first step the next thing we want to do is add a point layer so we'll go ahead and do that we'll click new layer and then point now you see the screen disappear what we want to do is go back to the tracker and now we're at step two applying to layer and purpose transform that could stay there but now what we want to do is attach this new point and before we do anything let's name that track one and connect that tracker to that point the x position and y position boxes are checked the bottom two aren't since we're using single point that's not necessary here those are for using double points now let's click apply great let's go to the viewer tab here highlight our track and let it run see what happens and you see it tracking right along very nice up 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 and away great so now we have our first tracking point next thing we want to do is have a second tracking point to have the illusion of floating so create another new point layer call this one track two now the important part here is that we need to parent this to the track one point let's go into the transform section zero everything out and now it's sitting right on the point where track one is as well so they would both move together as you see but what we want to do is move this up to give you the illusion of floating so let's do that maybe a little bit above the hand and now let's follow and see what happens now you see that point follow 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 moving up and off the screen so now we've built our structure the next thing we want to do is create our object so let's open up a new composite shot call it ball because we're going to be using a ball and we're going to be having a ball keep everything else the same and click OK now let's drag our ball into the media tab right here and drop it into the composite shot so now you see it's a very large ball and we don't want everything around it so let's create an ellipse mask and set it up here okay it's not perfect let's go ahead and click the arrow tool and clean up the edges a bit there we go maybe move the mask over just get that little black edge off of there good now let's go back to main and drop the ball composite shot right in here 
right about there. Now obviously we need to resize that. So let's go transform and make it about that size. That looks pretty good. And the next thing we want to do is parent this to track two. That's the floating point that we had in the last piece. Set the position to zero, zero. And now we have our floating ball. Let's take a look and see what it does. Now here's the problem. You see the ball disappears. And I'll show you why. Let's go back to the ball comp. And you see that this video was only five seconds long. So we need to stretch that out. So right click and select speed duration. And let's move the duration to 15 seconds. So the movement on the ball is going to be a lot slower. But for this, that's not going to matter too much. So let's click OK. Go back to main and see what happens now. The ball should be staying there. There we go. Up, up, and away. Now, if you want to get fancy with this, what you could do with the ball effect is maybe give it a little bit of a glow. So let's go to the effects, glow, and slide it on in there. You can change the intensity. You can do any number of things. The threshold and the radius, how bright the glow is. You can do any sorts of things here. And let's take another look here. And it's going, moving back up. Sadly, I still look as goofy as ever, and it's gone. And that's how you create a floating object. The great part about this is that once you have your framework set and you have your points laid out, you can put anything into the point and make it float. It doesn't have to be a ball. You could float a beer bottle. You can even float a potato. That's right. You can float a potato. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks again for watching.